Hey, everybody. I am back to give you some tips for how to deal with treatment, test, and doctor's visit anxiety, basically how to resolve it because it can be resolved. And I have helped many people to stop the anxiety that they have been experiencing around their medical care. And it's not hard to do. It's also incredibly beneficial to do it because your subconscious has enormous power to sway your decisions and to try to keep you from doing these things that you may need to do to heal, right? It can do so by manipulating your emotional state, making you so anxious that it feels like you absolutely cannot do the thing. It can also do so through your body, right? Like just having the anxiety can make you vomit, have diarrhea, get a headache, have a flare of pain, disrupt digestion and sleep and so much more, right? And all those things could take you out of the running for being able to make it to a doctor's visit or something. And it happens actually all the time that people's bodies are the way that the subconscious prevents them from doing something that they want to do. In addition to that, your subconscious can also affect the outcome of trying a treatment of any kind. Yes, I am talking about the placebo effect phenomenon, but it's an incredibly powerful phenomenon. I believe the statistics are that on average, 30% of any positive outcome from a drug is a placebo effect. And they've studied this in such a way that they can isolate that effect. Um, that's the whole point of placebo-controlled trials, right? So you see in those trials that there's a drug being taken by half the people and a placebo being taken by half the people. And the people in the placebo group who are just taking a sugar pill, they get better too. The amount of people that get better in the placebo group, I believe, is on average uh, about 30% of the response in the um, drug group. So the reason that they are getting better just from taking a sugar pill is because they expect the drug to help them, right? They've been told, oh, this drug is for your condition. It will make you better. And that enough is alone to create significant physiological changes in them because their subconscious thinks, oh, great, this drug is going to make this symptom better. And so it gets aligned with that outcome and helps to create it. I've seen it happen over and over again, that if someone fears or expects the worst from a particular treatment, that the worst actually happens. So this is the other direction you can go with the placebo effect. Basically, their body produces all kinds of wild side effects to any kind of treatment for the people who have the most medical trauma they tend to start reacting to even things like homeopathics and nutrients, which we on a physiological level shouldn't be reacting to, right? So that is a good indication that the brain is involved. In fact, I have seen people with IBS who bloat like crazy and get terrible abdominal pain just from drinking water. And that's because they have gotten so accustomed to being bloated from eating that their brain begins to expect it and anything they put in their mouth then causes bloating. So the way that people get out of that scenario is by rewiring their brain, reteaching their brain to not fear things that are going into their mouth and to actually expect the best instead of the worst. I've helped many people also prepare for and go into surgery, completely calm, like major surgery or other medical procedures as well, like colonoscopies, gynecology exams. I have also helped people rewire the fear of giving birth so that they go into birth feeling totally calm and confident. And yes, that is exactly what they experienced going into the birth because of course I asked for feedback to make sure. I have even helped someone resolve their subconscious stress response to going to the doctor. There was this woman who would have diarrhea whenever she would go to see her doctor. She used to feel anxious about going to the doctor, but she was doing rewiring work and she got to the point where she no longer felt anxious about going to the doctor, but her body would still produce diarrhea. So when we got that feedback from her, since she's a member in Wired for Wellness, we gave her some other steps to do, some other things that could resolve that. And then it resolved and it has not come back. And she continues to see doctors as needed without any stress response in body or mind. So that was pretty cool.
I have also helped people rewire their fear around taking medication, supplements, and so much more related to medical fears. One of my clients had a huge fear of going to doctors because she had been disrespected in the past and she was afraid that she was going to be criticized or put down by doctors. So those are the kinds of things that I've worked with all the time with people rewiring. Medical trauma is absolutely pervasive. There's millions upon millions of people struggling with medical trauma. And I get it because I've had some myself, but I rewired it and it doesn't affect me anymore. Okay. I'm going to just walk you through one of these cool cases where I did this work with someone. Uh, and this was for a client who had a lot of anxiety about having surgery. She had a surgery that she had decided she was going to do. She was very clear. I want this surgery, but she was very afraid. Her fears were around complications. Like, would there be any complications that would make her healing problematic, how she would take care of herself after the surgery because she lived alone and whether it would work to get her out of pain, things like that. Um, so I first helped her rewire any memories she had of her own or other people's surgeries going poorly. Um, I also helped her rewire any negative memories with medical care in general, because the brain is going to link those together, right? Because they are linked. <laughs> General medical care and surgery, they're all part of the same system. So the brain will link them together. If you have general medical care, bad memories, it can impact how you feel about other types of medical procedures or experiences, even if they're sort of different context. Then we worked on rewiring the beliefs that came up from those experiences, like doctors are incompetent or I'm a bad healer. I suck at wound healing. So this is going to be terrible. Or her future predictions that felt true, right? Like I'm going to be in pain afterwards. And you can put in this category, actually, worst case scenarios, right? Many, many people play out worst case scenarios in their head. And that acts like a belief system in your brain. Basically, when you play out that hypothetical your brain is going to have an emotional reaction to that as if it is happening right now. Because to a very large extent, your brain doesn't know the difference between what you are imagining in your mind's eye and what is actually happening in reality outside of you. And so that's why if you flash back to a memory, you can have an intense emotional response as if it's happening right now. Or if you go into the future and you make up a terrible worst case scenario, you can feel so anxious and all, all kinds of other things, all manner of negative emotions from playing out that worst case scenario, which means A, you're dysregulating your nervous system and B, you're teaching your brain. My belief is that this is going to go poorly and I'm preparing for it to go poorly by reacting to it now, right? I'm teaching you how I want you to react to that bad thing that's going to happen. And that's not what we want to do. We also rewired any other emotional association she had to having surgery, like anger and sadness about surgery being the best option. And all of this actually happened really quickly. I think that we only worked on this for like one or two sessions. So it sounds like a lot to do, but it actually progresses really, really fast. Even if you're doing it on your own with the processes we provide in Wired for Wellness, those processes are designed to help you with multiple things at once related to a, the same topic, right? So some of the processes will help you rewire memories and beliefs in the same process. So in the same 30 minute process as an example. So it can go fast on your own as well. So once the roots of her stress response around surgery were gone, then we began building her vision of her ideal surgery experience, including every aspect that was important to her, like having family support there or feeling calm during the surgery prep, feeling cared for by the nurses, getting to have a conversation with the surgeon ahead of time, waking up pain-free and having a sandwich and coffee afterwards, right? She was really <laughs> worried about the fasting because she's one of those people that tends to snack all day long. So she was really excited for the food afterwards. <laughs> then we envisioned her healing process going perfectly and her having all the support she needed during the time she was bedbound and recovering from the surgery. 
And I had her do this visualization twice a day for at least two weeks before the surgery. And no, you don't have to do the visualization for 15 minutes or something. It can be really short, like, but you could spend like a minute on it twice a day. And that would still have a profound impact on your brain. Of course, if you had been playing out worst case scenarios, you want to interrupt your brain doing that whenever it tries to, because of course, whatever you practice more of is what's going to become your brain's new default. So if you're practicing this positive visualization twice a day, but you're practicing your worst case scenario 10 times a day, it's probably not going to be very effective, right? So you got to start to catch yourself too. If your brain tries to do that anymore, it may not try to do it after you rewire the roots, but everybody's a little bit different. I would say a small percentage of the time people's brains still try to run that worst case scenario because it's just their brain's habit. This is particularly the case for people who do worst case scenarios in their head all day long about everything. Those people have a harder time because that is such an ingrained habit. They have this huge neural network for expecting the worst. Basically, their limbic system is really dysregulated, right? So for those people, interrupting if the brain starts to try to run the worst case scenario is really important. Then what happened is the day of the surgery, I had her do the visualizations and use her safety resources again upon waking up upon getting ready to leave for the surgery, when sitting in her car about to go into the surgery center, while she was waiting for surgery prep to get her ready for surgery, all of that stuff, she just kept sending signals of safety. The coolest part is she felt totally calm, cool as a cucumber the whole time. She didn't have any anxiety come up at all. And in addition to that, the surgery and the recovery did go literally exactly as she visualized it. So that was pretty cool. Now, it won't always be the case that what you visualize is going to be what happens in reality, but we want your subconscious to expect the best. And that is the only way that you will get your brain to feel calm about going into one of these things that you've made a very scary association to previously. Okay, so let's talk about how you can do this for yourself with anything that's medical related that you feel a lot of fear around, whether it's a certain kind of treatment, a test, getting test results, or doctor's visits. So it's important to start by taking a look at why these are a trigger for you, right? Remember that your past experiences have an enormous amount to do with that. And not just your past experiences, but also other people's. So if you've read a million stories online of people who got colonoscopies and had a bad outcome, like a perforated bowel, then your brain is going to expect that bad outcome for you and be very, very afraid, right? But we know that that only happens a tiny percentage of the time. Unfortunately, logic is not strong enough to overpower the subconscious. So that's a good reason why you don't really want to be looking for stories about worst case scenarios related to anything you need to do for your medical care. Looking up statistics might be reasonable if you're trying to make a decision like, am I going to get this surgery or am I not going to get this surgery? Because let's say it's elective. It's not something you absolutely need. Yeah, you could look up some statistics. That wouldn't be terrible. But reading people's emotional, painful stories about it going wrong will have an absolutely detrimental effect on your ability to remain calm. And those will become your memories that need to be rewired in order for you to be able to be calm again with whatever it is, doctor's visits, treatments, surgeries, procedures, blah, blah, blah. So reflect on whether you've had some bad experiences in the past with doctors, with tests, with getting test results, with medical treatments, if your family and friends have had some of those that really stuck out in your mind that really like impacted you when they happened, even stranger stories that you've read in books or online or whatever, if you can still remember them, then your brain is able to definitely use them as a negative resource for producing stress responses to medical care in the present. So make a list of those memories 
and then bring them to rewiring processes that are designed for changing memories. We have processes like that in the Wired for Wellness program that can help you do that. But if any of these memories are super traumatic, like you think about them and you get triggered up to uh, 8, 9, 10, I would recommend bringing those memories to be rewired with a professional that, like myself who does rewiring of memories all day long with Ideally, this kind of tool set, because I'm going to tell you there are a lot of types of processes out there that people think are good for rewiring memories, but they're actually not that good. But that's what's said about them a lot. I receive clients all the time who have tried other methods and they're still just as traumatized by those memories as they used to be. So be careful about your choice about which thing you're going to use to do that. Um, it's also important to start by taking a look at why these are triggers for you, right? Sorry, I, I did say that already, but in regards to belief systems, right? Negative and stressful belief systems can also cause us to have really intense stress responses to things like this. So take note inside yourself of whether you have some stressful belief systems about the test or the doctors or doctor's visits or hospitals or surgery, the supplement or the medication, right? Whatever it is, check in on your belief systems about that and your belief systems about medical care in general. Oftentimes, if we have bad experiences with something or someone we're close to does, or we've read a lot of stories of people who do, we develop belief systems out of those. Basically, those are just thoughts that have a lot of emotional backing to them, right? So those might be things like, doctors don't care. Doctors are negligent. I'm too sensitive to take XYZ treatment. Surgery is going to kill me, right? Because oftentimes the emotion we have is actually indicating what we believe about it, right? So if you think to yourself, surgery can kill you and you ex respond to that with an extreme amount of fear, then that means your brain thinks surgery will kill me right? As opposed to, yes, there's a like 0.1% chance that this surgery could kill me. So we also provide processes in the Wired for Wellness program that are designed to help you rewire belief systems, basically to detach the emotional response from the idea or thought until it ceases to feel true or it ceases to feel like one possibility among many. Or if this is like one of those negative beliefs about doctors, like, yes, some doctors are negligent and have bad bedside manner, and some are not. And that is reality. That is truth. But our experiences can make it feel like all doctors are negligent, all doctors are whatever the belief is, okay? So then check and see what other emotions you feel when you think about seeing a doctor or getting the treatment or the procedure or getting the test or the test results. If fear and anxiety are not the only emotions you feel about that, write down the other negative ones because you want to dissipate that emotional association as well to help your brain feel calm going into that in the future. So something like maybe you're angry or disappointed in the medical profession, as many of my clients are at first and like I used to be. Maybe you feel abandoned or betrayed by medical providers or someone else you love feels that way and so you feel that way through extension. These other negative emotional associations should be rewired so that you can reach that state of total calm with medical care. And no, that doesn't mean that you'll revert to thinking doctors are gods and the medical system is perfect. No, it just means that you don't get dysregulated by it, right? You just go, yep, that's, that's reality and I'm okay. I'm safe in this moment, even though that is part of what's going on out there. Sometimes we get anxious about these things related to medical care because of the unknown, right? We don't know what the outcome is going to be from whatever it is. But the unknown doesn't have to be bad, right? Yeah. So if your brain is feeling unsafe about the unknown, what it's really doing is expecting the worst. And it can be taught to expect the best instead. And a great way to teach your brain to do that is to mentally rehearse whatever it is that you need to do 
you rehearse it going perfectly, just as you want it to in every way. You don't want to do that by saying in your head, oh, and when I wake up from surgery, I don't feel pain and the nurse is not an asshole to me. No, no, no. You want to flip the script and go completely positive with it, right? So you want to say, I wake up from surgery and I feel totally calm, you know, and I, the nurse is so kind to me and brings me anything I want or need. So that's how you want to frame it in the wholly positive. Then one of the most important parts about that mental rehearsal is to imagine that you feel totally calm as you go into it and experience it, right? That's your goal after all, right? And so that means you need to add that into your mental rehearsal. And I'm going to give you a really easy way to do that because it may not come naturally as you have had a precedent of feeling very threatened by that context. All right, so it's important to remember that the subconscious doesn't hear I don't want X, Y, Z. It doesn't. It doesn't hear that. It does not hear the I want versus I don't want part of it. If you're envisioning or thinking about your worst case scenario, that is sending instructions to the subconscious to produce that for you, if at all possible, if it has power over that. And it gets good at whatever we rehearse, right? It's also true that the brain is geared to expect the worst to try to protect us. That's reality. But in people with dysregulated nervous systems, this can occur to the extreme. In either case, we have to intentionally change that pattern. And we have to instead teach the brain to expect the best, right? So for folks who have already set a precedent of being very afraid of the unknown or being very afraid of new things or being afraid of medical care, you've got to actually do something to change that. It's not going to happen just magically. And this protocol, I can tell you very confidently when done right, will absolutely do that for you. Practicing what you don't want over and over again will also produce greater and greater stress responses each time until you get to the treatment and then you may practically have a meltdown. That's why it's so important to do this, to flip the script in your brain and expect the best. Now, if you have memories or belief systems about medical care that are stressful, this visualization part won't go so well until you address those. What's going to happen is your brain is going to fight you on it. It's going to put up a lot of resistance to you trying to envision the best case scenario because of what it has already learned about medical care of this kind, right? You're going up against your own learned paradigm. And that's why we recommend rewiring those memories and beliefs first, and then doing this mental rehearsal of best case scenario. So here's how I like my clients to do this visualization that tends to make it a lot easier to emotionally associate to this future visualization in a positive way, basically to make sure you can actually feel it when you're rehearsing it in your mind's eye, which is very important for you to actually get results from it. This really isn't about logicking our way into trying to feel calm. It's about actually feeling calm over and over again when we're thinking about having that procedure or going to the doctor or get, taking the supplement. And through that repetition of feeling that way, the brain links that emotional state to whatever that is stronger and stronger and stronger. And then eventually that becomes your default with that. All right. So like I said, here's how I like my clients to do it. What you want to do is start by accessing something else that makes you feel really safe and calm in your mind's eye, such as being at the beach on a beautiful day or cuddling a loved one or a beloved pet, listening to your favorite feel-good song, smelling your favorite calming scent, anything like that. So imagine first that you're experiencing that right now. So if it's the song, hear it in your head. If it's being at the beach on a beautiful day, go there in your mind's eye. Same with cuddling a loved one. If it's smelling your favorite scent, let's say it's lavender. Imagine you're sitting next to a big lavender bush or sniffing a big bundle of lavender and 
bring it up in your mind. And then you want to stick with that until you get good feelings from it and make those feelings as strong and as real as you can. Once those feelings are really present and very strong, then carry that calm feeling into the vision of the doctor's appointment, the treatment, the procedure, the test, whatever it is. Carry it into the vision of that going really, really well, like exactly as you want it to, okay? And then play that vision out in your mind in as much detail as you can so that it feels really real to your brain. And try to keep that calm feeling with you the whole time you play out the vision. So as I said when I was talking about that case, I recommend practicing this once or twice a day leading up to something like this that you're really nervous about or have been nervous about in the past. If it's something you've been super nervous about, do that for a longer period of time, like two weeks, like at least two weeks. As an example, if it is surgery and you've been petrified in the past of surgery, then doing this visualization for a longer period of time beforehand is a good idea. Then right when you're about to take that new supplement or medication or go into the surgery center or get that test or test results, do that same combination visualization, two-part visualization right before and right after the medical thing. If you're going into surgery, right, there's a period of time where you're just waiting around, right, for to be prepped for it. So if it's a situation like that, then do the visualization again while you're in the MRI or you're waiting to have surgery. Really, the goal here is to give your brain as many signals of safety as you need to, to teach it that this context is safe and you're going to be okay. <clears throat> and then going into a treatment or procedure, doing this ahead of time and after this visualization will dramatically improve your results and your healing in most cases, because being calm is the healing state right? That safe and social or rest, digest and heal state is what produces the feeling of calm. So this is the state in which all significant healing takes place. And so doing this work to prepare yourself for something like this is a really good thing to do. For all of my super sensitives to medications and supplements, I have worked with many, many people that struggle with things like that. It is very well known that getting your nervous system better regulated in general, but also using a process like this to Im improve your as emotional associations to taking medications and supplements, all of that will go an enormous way towards helping you respond to those medications or supplements better in the future. We see this all the time that somebody used to react horribly to taking olive leaf extract. <laughs> and then they do this neural retraining work and get better regulated and rewire their negative expectations and emotional associations to taking olive leaf. And then voila, they're able to take olive leaf again and have no negative reaction to it. The same thing can go for foods, for EMF sensitivity, for chemical sensitivity, this kind of approach really applies to many things like that, that we are very afraid of, or that we've made a really strong negative association to through our own experiences or other people's. I really hope that helps you guys out there who are trying to figure out how you can have a better outcome from your medical care, particularly when it comes to being really anxious or really afraid of certain types of medical care. Thanks so much for watching. And if you benefited from this video, please like, please share it, please comment. All of that really helps other people to find this information and benefit from it too. All right. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video.